Hello, this is Mike Ryan with Right With God Ministries. And if this is your first time, we share and teach the gospel of grace exclusively. And we want you to know God's love for you and how it's practical to overcome every issue in your life. We also teach um, the gospel of grace and expose some of the lies and the myths that we see have creeped that crept into our church. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. Um, please feel free to like and share. That helps this message get circulated. Today, we're going to talk about justification by works. Jesus versus James. This is a very important topic, and we're going to clear it up right now because I do think it's Jesus versus James. Many people would say, well, this is Paul versus James. But the Bible tells us in Galatians that Paul says he got his gospel of grace directly from Jesus. He says in Galatians 1, I didn't get this from myself. This isn't something I thought up on my own. I didn't have a great dream or a powerful, overwhelming vision of a dream. Jesus gave me this message. And even when he was appealing uh, to the to the king Agrippa, he repeated it again that Jesus came, Jesus told him to go preach this gospel of grace, to preach the inheritance of state, to preach um, sanctification by faith. So, justification by works is directly going verses against what Jesus told Paul to preach on the gospel of grace. One of the other things I want you to understand is that grace is a person and his name is Jesus. Grace is another name for Jesus. The gospel of grace is also the gospel of Jesus. We are saved by grace. We are saved by Jesus. We are justified by grace. More on that later. We are justified by Jesus. Romans 4.25. Grace helps us. Jesus helps us. God's grace offers salvation to all, and Jesus is the Savior of all. And I could go on. Grace is a teacher. Jesus is a teacher. Grace reigns. Jesus reigns. These are all in the scriptures. Grace is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so we need to get this straight that to know grace is to know Jesus. To know Jesus is to know grace. Do you know Jesus? no grace this is why this issue of justification of works by works is so important and we're going to get to the bottom of it and I, I want you to be able to have a clear and comfortable understanding of James and why I believe that ultimately the Holy Spirit allowed this to be canon despite the fact you know there's some people believe and I think it's true that James and Paul had conflict over this issue of grace which they did in Acts 15 there was a great contention no small contention over this issue of following the law. But I do believe that James eventually got it together. In fact, that's church history that he got on the same page and understood the gospel of grace. And um, I do wanna share with you where this is. So our foundation is that we are talking about when we say justification, it's just as if you've never sinned. Does that come by your behavior through the works that you do? Or does that come by faith? Is that realized? Is that confirmed or rather crystallized by the works that you do? In other words, some people will say that they do believe in justification by faith. But if your works don't match up, then you really don't have that faith. That sounds reasonable, but it is a dangerous trap. Because then truly, we're ultimately looking to our works. We can't do that because righteousness comes by faith. Romans 4, 5 says, but to him who does not work, I'm gonna say that again. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the godly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. 
it's not your work unto him who does not work but believes but you like this one in Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 this is really good I like it in the New Living Translation I love how it expresses this hold on to your seats for this one Galatians 2 16 New Living Translation yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ not by obeying the law and we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ not because we have obeyed the law for no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law or through works the obeying the law is the highest work there is no work higher than obeying the law the only work higher than obeying the law is to believe on the Son of God. Did you get that? Did you hear that? The only work higher than the law, all 600 and some odd points of it, is to believe on the Son of God who saved you. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our behavior? No. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So now let's get to this issue with James. Why does James say that a person is justified by works also? I mean, what is this? This is confusing. You're not going to be confused by the top we're done. Brother or sister, when I tell you this, it's going to be so clear as day. The reason why this is confusing is because James is not speaking about salvation. I'm going to say this again. James is not speaking about salvation. It's not what he's ultimately referring to. How do you know that? Because he starts this and introduces this concept of being justified by the works as well as faith in James chapter 2. And he starts by talking about the issue of believers showing partiality to one another. James is talking about justification by works as it relates to showing other believers your faith. James is talking about justification by works as it relates to showing others your faith. I'm going to prove it to you. He starts with talking about the importance to not have partiality on other people simply because of their financial status, how they dress, their social status. And he starts talking about the way to treat people. And incidentally, if you read the book of James, the letter of James, all five chapters, they are majority about how we treat one another. Being slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to wrath, guarding your tongue, not showing partiality, fighting with one another because we are, have selfish desires that are raging in, taking advantage of people, taking them and exploiting them. James is speaking about behavior that is unseemly for people who are giving a testimony of Jesus Christ. And he gives an example here in James 2.14. What does it profit, my brethren? Look, this is me proving to you that he is talking about person to person, not salvation. If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? Can he save faith? Can, can it just look like your faith is going to make you okay? He says, here's the example. He doesn't go to a salvation example with this. He goes to a relational example. 
if a brother, if James or Jennifer is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says, go in peace, be warmed and filled, but you don't give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Do you see? He's now explaining the previous sentence about profit and saving. It is not salvation. Why does he say save? I don't know. He could have used a different word. He could have. But you must not deny faith and righteousness. And all of the scriptures we understand about grace and salvation being a gift from God. It's an act of God's love that cannot be earned or maintained through your behavior, through the law. You cannot deny those scriptures because of a word. He says, save him, but that's not the context. It's context is not salvation. And then I'll, I'm going to keep proving this to you because I want you to be persuaded. He says, thus also faith by itself in verse 17 in James 2. If it does not have works, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Then he says this, key, show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my work. You see, this is person to person, human to human. God doesn't, that's not required for salvation. But if I tell you that I am a devout believer and I want to help everyone as Jesus has helped me and I don't show up for that soup kitchen volunteer role that I said I was going to be at, that everyone was relying on my presence to be, my faith does not mean anything to them. My faith is not profiting anything. You know what else? Let me give you another example of this. The gift of tongues. If any of you have ever spoken in tongues, you can ex you can say, wow, that is a powerful experience. If you've spoken in angelic tongues in your devotion time, your time with the Lord, your time ministering and just enjoying his presence, that is powerful. But if you go to somebody else and speak in tongues, angelic tongues, and they have no idea what you're saying, it will not profit them. Does it mean it's um, unprof unprofitable? No. It just means that people aren't going to understand. They're not going to be edified. It doesn't edify if you have faith, but you don't show your works. If you say you trust Jesus, but you never talk about Jesus. If you take your light and you don't shine it. Person to person. I'll give you, I keep going on with James here. I'll keep going on here. Likewise, verse 25 of chapter 2, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? Hmm. Was Rahab justified? Rahab would have to be justified by following the law. He's talking about being justified by the people of Israel who needed help in taking out Jericho and they needed to know that they can trust her and bring her in the fold. So she was justified with the people of Israel because of the way she protected the messengers and kept them safe. She justified that she truly did not identify with the people of Jericho, even though those were her people, and she identified with the people of Israel. She demonstrated that to the messenger, person to person, person to person. We are justified by faith alone. And that faith covers all of your works that aren't good, that are unholy, it covers it. Abraham is said to have been justified by his work. James talks about this in that same chapter. Again, justified to other people. Paul says in Romans 4.20 that Abraham was unwavering in his faith. Really? You see, because he was accounted righteousness for God by his faith, he's covered and he's righteous. But in reality... His faith did waver. 
putting aside him telling people that Sarah was his sister because he didn't want to get killed, not believing the promises of God fully, right? He questioned it. He wrestled with it. Sarah laughed at it. He had a relationship with Hagar. He had a child with another woman even after God told him that the child was going to come through Sarah. He did waver. But you see, his righteousness was by his faith. So the Bible does not report that about him in the New Testament because his faith covers him. And it's the same with you. You are justified just as if you've never sinned before God by your faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I could go on about this, but I, we're going to stop there. If you have any thoughts or feedback or comments, go ahead and leave it below and we can interact more on the topic. God bless you. And see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and drop a comment below. For more grace-based Bible teachings every week, please subscribe to our channel. Please visit us on Facebook and our website, Right With God Ministries dot life.